morning, church. It's Tuesday morning, and we want to look at Psalm 28. And this is, again, David crying out to the Lord in prayer. Uh, some kind of a national crisis was going on in David's life. It's possible that it's the time, again, of the rebellion of Absalom, as David is having to flee, and he takes his uh, military group that's with him, and they have to leave Jerusalem. And Absalom comes in and takes over and then there's going to be a civil war in which uh, the two kings are going to fight and, and Absalom is going to be destroyed. David will be eventually restored, but they're probably right in the midst of that. That may be the circumstances here. But as you hear David crying out to the Lord, you can see the desperation of David as he's pleading to the Lord uh, and asking the Lord to, to act on his behalf. Uh, certainly, we're in a national crisis ourselves uh, in America. We can see it all around us. A civil war has broken out. It's a civil war of values and of words right now, but who knows when it will break out into violence. But we need to recognize that we need to always look to the Lord. It is the Lord who restores. I don't know why God allowed uh, all the things to happen in David's life the way they did. Uh, we do know he did sin against God in the issue of Bathsheba, and, and now his son is rebelling against him. But God does take our circumstances of life and he turns those around for good and so here's david's plea uh, david's prayer to you i will cry O lord my god my rock do not be silent to me lest if you are silent to me i'll go down like those down into a pit hear the voice of my supplication when i cry to you when i lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace in their, to their neighbors, but evil in their hearts. And that's, again, possibly what uh, had happened. We know that Absalom was very wise in the sense that he spoke peace and he spoke gently to the people, but in the truth, he had rebellion in his heart all the time. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the works of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Now David wasn't a vengeful man, but he did believe in sowing and reaping. And those who rebel against a righteous king, those who come and do evil, he says, give them what they deserve. They're trying to destroy David, and Absalom's the one who winds up getting destroyed. Verse 5. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operations of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Because they're not walking in the ways and the will of the Lord, he says, God's going to destroy them. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength, my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song... I will praise you. Even before the outcome of all that takes place, he says, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to know that God is going to be with me. He's going to uphold the upright. He's going to take care of righteousness. He's going to do what's uh, just and what's fair. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving refuge of his anointed. David believed heavily in the anointing of God in the sense that God had anointed Saul to be king, and David would not touch him and that God had anointed David to be king. And now his son was not doing uh, the same thing. He, he was willing to touch David. He was willing to kill David. He wanted David to, to be dead. He was willing to overthrow uh, the government. And so he understood that God had anointed uh, him, David, that God had anointed David, and that God was going to uphold him because he was God's anointed. But also I think it speaks to... Uh, to, to the truly anointed one. It's the word Messiah, Messiah, that we, we uh, it describes Jesus later on, this word anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. And that was David's prayer for his uh, kingdom. And though there was a bloody battle, and there, though there was a civil war, God did restore uh, the kingdom back together, only then to be destroyed by the sin of Rehoboam and Jeroboam later after David's death. Let us pray together. 
Father, we thank you that we can trust in you, even in times of national calamity and when our country seems to be collapsing and when people have lost all vestige of understanding, and when the base mind has taken control of our nation. We recognize we look to you, for you're the God who upholds us. Help us to walk in the integrity of our hearts and to serve you, even in these dark and dismal days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.